We're on the set of Book View now at BookCon 2015. Gail Foreman, you're here for a full hour. You're going to be with us to guest host. I got my coffee. I'm ready to go. I'm thrilled to have you. But as we were about to come on, Lauren Oliver walked by and we said, hey, come join us for a minute. And we're thrilled to have you. Yeah. I say yes to everything Gail asked me to do. So it's true. Pretty well, much. you guys know each other. And so like I saw you hugging. And I was like, ping, the light bulb went up. I was like, all right, all right, all right. Come on up. Yeah. We share a love of upstate writing and what else? Each other. And each other. Yeah. yeah. And think, profanity that we are not going to use during this, yes, this time no. on the show. I mean, yeah. we live like within a mile of each we other do. and we never actually see each other I in know, our neighborhood. It's true. We, we actually see each other other places fairly often, fairly often. but not in our neighborhood. We yeah. both live in Brooklyn. Okay. And we never see each other there. We always talk about working together. We don't. <laughs> but we managed to like spend a yeah. good amount of time together. I, I spent a week upstate in your house without yes. you, but I knew which room was haunted immediately. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. There's a ghostly presence up there. Um, so. And it's yeah. great. And, and it's great. I'm a huge fan of her work. And I remember I when first, as an author, you have that weird situation where people come up to you and they're, you're like, they see you made me cry or you made me lose night's sleep and your appropriate response is thank you. Yeah. And I, when I read Lauren's debut novel, I had that experience. So I read Before I Fall and stayed up all night long, unable to put it down. And I was on tour and I needed to sleep. And I think I Facebooked you and a message the next day like, you get lost me a yeah. night's sleep. I love this book so much. And it's been like that. Well, you since. know, it's so funny because Gail and I also tend to be interested in very similar th themes in our books. So our works have kind of paralleled each other at a lot of different phases. Mm -hmm. um, so even earlier this year, we both did an event together and we were really, I was really surprised by all of the real parallels in, in the books to, to one another. And that was true of Before I Fall and If I Stay. Mm -hmm. So, um, so yeah, it's fun. You know how to make people cry. I mean, yeah. I think that's something you both sort of got. You just got. twist hard enough. Heart <laughs> wrenching. I mean, right you hear these ear, words. It really works. So you do like a surge. The words that come up do kind of match sometimes. For you. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Although you're playing around too, Lauren, because you've just written this book. When I talked to you in Miami, you had written, you know, moved sort of into the adult yeah, realm. Yeah. Although I think that that's sort of a weird yeah. term that I don't always understand. Yeah, does anybody else? Yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah, I know. I wish. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and now you have Vanishing Girls. Yeah. So Vanishing Girls is new, and then I have a middle grade series launching this fall. But and I mean, I know, and you're working on a bunch of different things too. Yeah. I mean, I think, as you say, I mean, it's hard to know how relevant and pertinent it is you know, how relevant the, the kind of labels are. And I also think that just for writers in general, especially writers with incredibly diverse reading tastes as I, as I have and I you have, it's not that interesting to, to think about categories. Right. Um, and that's not how you come up with your ideas. Yeah. You know. I don't think there would be categories if there weren't shelves in a bookstore. Right. Exactly. Right. I think it's the bookstore's fault. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, the categories for us are the ages of the protagonists of our yeah. novels. Right. So, yeah. you know, I'm working on a middle grade novel now because I wanted to write about a 10 year old. And I'm working on an adult novel now because I wanted to write a novel from the point of view of a mother and a wife. And you can't really do that in yeah. my age. Yeah. Right. So. Unless you're a teen mom. Yeah, teen and then it's all yeah. different. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's a different Then mom. it's an after school special. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so tell me, because you guys have been to a lot of book expos and, and book con, and book con is relatively new though. This is the uh, a new sort of customer facing, reader facing event. Mm -hmm. um, and they get to get close, they get to talk. And there's such enthusiasm in this building. And I don't know if the words energy and books often in are Javis cast Center. each other. Yeah, yeah Javis Javis Center. Center. Like, yeah, exactly. wah, wah. But usually, <laughs> <laughs> usually, it's very exciting. You know, I mean, I think the idea of mixing those things is really fun for people who love books. And it's different than Comic Con because books have a place at Comic Con, but here it's that sliver, that, that, that important yeah. element. It just lives on its own and has so much energy. Well, I'm definitely feeling that since within 30 seconds of walking in, I was conscripted into being on this TV show. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> no, but um, I think it's great. And I, I really do think it's interesting because, you know, there have been so many new articles now about the role of fandoms yeah. just in, in general, but, but specifically related to books and the kind of stratospheric rise in popularity of certain books. And obviously that's facilitated by... Um, online, you know, the fact that everyone can communicate online. But I also think it's really significant that like ultimately, no matter how wired we are, any generation is, you really just want to go and see people and interact right. with them in person. Right. And like meet your favorite authors and meet other people that are fans that you've been speaking to online. That's right. I think yeah. it's important because as authors we spend so much of our time alone, in a room, with our characters. And it's nice to get out here and engage with the fans. And it's nice to kind of put the phones down, like 
have a moment together. Yeah. And sometimes those moments happen like in that room when you're doing that panel or in the signing line. Yeah. And it's just, it's, it's a different experience than you have day to day. Yeah, and you know, I was actually saying to a friend of mine, because this, you know, BookCon this year is on the direct heels of BEA, and I was saying that, you know, despite obviously the Javits Center not being the most scenic place in Manhattan, not the most scenic area of Manhattan, I've come to really like BEA because, A, to me it now signifies the start of summer, since yes. I've been going to so many, so many Memorial of them. Day. I know, exactly. I'm like, yep, it's After BEA, BEA you can wear white. Yeah, yes. but I also realize, like, this, I see, I actually truly adore and like 98% of the people in this industry, yeah. the writers, the publishers, the editors, I mean, the ones I know, the ones I just meet. And often I don't get to see them except at conventions like this. And it is truly deeply pleasurable to know that I'm gonna come and see people that I really enjoy talking to and I really enjoy hanging out with. Yeah. Um, and I can only imagine, you know, of course that's how the fans feel as well, but even for me, I mean, it's, it's the same experience. Yeah. I, you'll have to then, I love all the people in the publishing industry too, but you'll have to apologize to all the publicists as I was making the calls. I was like, you will get them to our set. You know, like, <laughs> uh, they do such good work. Yeah. It is cool to see the combination of uh, publishers talking directly to readers, I mean, while they're here. Yeah, no, absolutely. But I also think your fandoms are different on the YA side than they are with the adult side. We've talked to a lot of quote unquote adult writers this week. And there's not this crush of people trying to get close to them necessarily. They're like, I think that's John Gershwin right there. But that's you know it. Un unlike you guys, when there's like, they see you and they want to be with you, they want to talk that's to you. That's because adults feel like they have to play it cool. Yeah. I yeah. imagine there's a lot of adults who are like, that's John Grisham. I really want to go up and get a picture yeah. with him, but yeah. I can't do that because yeah. I'm embarrassed and self-conscious. And when you're younger, A, it's a different generation where they're like, that technology and that whole thing is much more comfortable to them. But also, you're younger. I think they're just like right yeah. in it. And I also think a lot of younger, I mean, I think also at that age, if you're really talking about the teen fans, I mean, at that age, what's so important to you is that you feel recognized for being a person, for existing, for, I mean, I was just thinking too, the other day when I was in the bathroom but I was in like a public bathroom and you know people still write I was here and they write you know LS plus you know what I mean whatever yeah, yeah. exactly it was you wasn't it yeah. yeah but they do that and I was like it's so funny that no matter again no matter what the technology is people are still just taking this time to be like I'm imprinting myself here right. I have a crush on somebody here and it's the same thing that teens feel I think seeing an author they want to tell you that they connected to your work and they want to also have you just recognize them as you know a thinker and a reader and a person you know and I think that that need either lessens or maybe just gets sublimated or hidden as you get older yeah. you know well I'm thrilled that you ambled on by and Thanks. I'm Thanks thrilled that we me. wrangled you <laughs> onto the set uh, Gail you're with us for the next I'm 45 minutes or so yeah. <laughs> and we're gonna be out in just a little bit with Jason Reynolds we're excited to have him here too but thank you so much Thanks Lauren for, for coming by me. again it's great to have you